Hi everyone, today we're going through a Station Eleven essay paragraph that I have put together for you and I'm going to not only just read it out and provide you with a transcript of it in the description to the video, but also allow you to see some of the things that I've done that have allowed me to get to a deeper level with my analysis. I want you to be thinking not just about the content, but also the language that's been used that's allowed this to be a paragraph that is focused on what Mandel is saying through Station Eleven, and also being able to look at how she has said those things through her construction of the text. So let's jump in. In both the world before the Georgia flu and the aftermath of the pandemic, Mandel's characters are shown to be active in creating false realities as a means to escape the elements of their lives with which they are not comfortable with. Seen as an outsider, Miranda feels as if she doesn't belong in her own life with Arthur in Los Angeles. Her admission of friendlessness leads her to spend most of her time alone, working on her art. Dr. Eleven as a comic can be seen as a construction of what she wishes her reality to be. The character of Dr. Eleven is reminiscent of Pablo, yet not like him in any other way a further indication of Miranda's ability to construct a reality in order to cope with the harsh situations she faces. And so let's take a look at those four sentences and how they build on each other to get to a form of analysis. Because something that often students struggle with is the idea of not just retelling the story, uh, but being able to have that idea of having evidence in there, but being able to go with that evidence to get to the ideas of what the text might be about. And so when we look at this uh, first sentence after the uh, topic sentence has been put out, we have some quotes that show an understanding of Miranda, that she's an outsider, she doesn't belong. And so that's just putting it out there and basically saying, OK, I understand who Miranda is. I can use two quotes that show that I understand that Mandel is pointing uh, to uh, Miranda as being a character who doesn't belong. And so that's been established. It then goes a little bit further to say her admission of friendlessness leads her to spend most of her time alone working on her art. And at this point, we've got two sentences that have given an outline and an understanding as to who Miranda is. I'd be really wary here if this paragraph kept going on just giving more and more evidence. And so I want you to see here that the point's been made. This idea that um, Miranda is this friendless person, spends most of her time alone, doesn't belong an outsider. We've used four quotes. The point's been made. So it's now time to really get to the analysis of what is really being said through this. Dr. Eleven as a comic can be seen as a construction of what she wishes her reality to be. And so this is where it starts to get to analysis, not just putting evidence out there. Of course, it is talking about Dr. Eleven as a comic, which is another form of evidence, but it's really saying that the whole idea, because she's friendless, because she doesn't belong, that Dr. Eleven is this comic that is a construction of a reality because she's not happy with the way that her life is. It elaborates a bit further. The character of Dr. Eleven is reminiscent of Pablo, as I read earlier. So again, it's not just evidence, it's actually getting to this idea of saying, well, the reason why that uh, Dr. Eleven is unlike Pablo in any other way is because Miranda is constructing a reality to deal with her current situation and uh, the harsh situation that she faces. And so when you take a look at those four sentences and the way in which they move into each other, it is establishing a point about Miranda and who she is. It's using evidence to make sure that that point is a valid one and one that shows a good knowledge of the text. But then it goes to talk about the construction of the text in terms of the comic and what the comic represents and the fact that Pablo is not like uh, the real Pablo in any other way, therefore getting to this point that really what Mandel is saying is that people will construct realities in order to deal with their lives. So take a look at how that moved from the evidence to the analysis of that evidence and see if it does it again throughout the rest of the paragraph. Arthur also exemplifies how one can create their own reality as he is often portrayed as performing in his interactions with those around him. And so I want you to uh, really understand here that um, by bringing in another character, I don't just want to say the exact same thing again. And so when I've said that all Arthur also exemplifies, I want to make sure that the evidence that I'm bringing in and the character I'm bringing in brings a different dynamic to the idea. That I'm not just saying, yeah, the same thing happens through another character. 
and that's it because that would be really useless in the end. I'd just be making the same point. So look at what's done with this discussion of Arthur and what he does. His inability to meet Miranda's gaze at their anniversary dinner, coupled with his performance under the track lighting of the restaurant in London, portray him as perpetually playing a role. And so now we're looking at a different idea of how people deal with the reality that's really there around them. And rather than it being through a comic and through taking uh, her own um, parts of her life and changing how they actually are, as Miranda does... What Arthur does is similar, but he uh, plays a role. And Mandel shows this through the track lighting, the inability to meet the gaze. And so it's got its roots in the idea that these are the same sort of things uh, that are happening, but there is a different dynamic that exists. It all comes back to the same idea, but we can add further dimension to our thinking by including the evidence from another character. This is further highlighted through his confessional letters to his friend Victoria. Mandel creates a stark division between what is real and authentic versus that which is fake, which allows her to demonstrate the way in which some may choose to construct a reality that permits them to not completely deal with the reality that they face. And I want to highlight this section here because what's really, really important about this is that what has happened with this paragraph is that we have now moved from evidence and lots of evidence. We've had evidence about Miranda and a bit of analysis of that. We've had evidence about Arthur and some really good quotes and some uh, analysis of that. And now we've had this sentence that begins with the author's name. And it's showing that basically after all of that evidence, we're really going to punch through here and make sure that we are discussing the author's intentions, the author's values, the author's ideas that she was conveying through this novel and that some may choose to construct a reality. You'll notice there that it doesn't say Mandel talks about how Arthur and Miranda do it. She's talking about in general, this is what Mandel is saying through her text. Mandel outlines the dangers of this practice for both the individual and the larger society around them. And so we have a further tweak on this idea of it, not just exploring an idea, but she's actually outlining that this is a dangerous thing to do. This is not a, a healthy thing for people to do. Arthur finds that his life resembles a movie and the breakdown of his three marriages leaves him as an unfulfilled character with very little connection to those around him. On a societal level, Mandel exhibits how this type of thinking can create a false sense of security. The cashier's insistence that the Georgia flu will be just like SARS, coupled with the belief that those in the airport would eventually become unstranded, highlights the false security enjoyed by a society and how fragile this security can really be. Ultimately, Mandel suggests that individuals and societies must face their realities in order to grow and find a true sense of how they really are. And so the last thing that I want to point out to you about this paragraph is the most important part of it overall, and that is the manner in which it moves from doing different things. In that, obviously, with the first sentence there, we have this idea about what is um, being said in the paragraph, that it's about creating false realities. We then have this section here in the middle where we are talking about characters that show this idea of how we can create false realities. And so it's that idea of saying, OK, here's what the paragraph's going to be about. Here's two characters and a bunch of quotes and some structural elements that show that, yep, this is what's been said. But then look at how the paragraph shifts here after I've highlighted this part about Mandel to be talking about, all right, I've used all the evidence. Now's my time to really get stuck into some analysis. Um, she creates a stark division. So that's something that Mandel has done, how she has put the text together and then what she is saying. She's outlining the dangers of the practice. It then comes to talk about evidence again, but I want you to notice what it does differently here. It's using this evidence with the understanding that the ideas of what this paragraph is going to be about and the values of Mandel and what she is saying have already been, been established. So therefore, when it says that Arthur finds that his life resembles a movie, it's doing so with the understanding that uh, there is a sense of uh, this not being a healthy thing for characters like Arthur. And so when we read that part about it resembling a movie, it's really saying to your teacher or the assessor, whoever's reading this paragraph, that, okay, I've made the point about what Mandel is saying. Now that I'm putting more evidence there, in light of that, you can see just what I mean and how Mandel is saying that. 
um, and we talk about the breakdown of the marriages on a societal level. It goes back, Mandel again. And so it's always coming back to Mandel and her messages and what she is saying. Exhibits how this type of thinking can create a false sense of security. So it's providing another message, another idea. It's not just saying that uh, Mandel is saying that it's dangerous for people to deal um, in uh, these realities that aren't really true. Now it's also saying that on a societal level, um, that it creates a false sense of security. It goes on with more evidence, this idea of the cashier and the people saying in the uh, airport that they'll eventually become unstranded. Um, and that just highlights this false sense of security that exists. And of course, we finish off here with ultimately, Mandel suggests that individuals and societies must face their realities in order to grow and find a true sense of how they really are. And so it ends up with that sentence saying, okay, this whole paragraph has been about um, people creating false realities and whatnot, but ultimately at the end of all of these things that have been said, Mandel's message is that if we're going to grow and find a true sense of who we really are, we have to face our reality. And so I want you to have a read through that again and have a think about the way in which the paragraph moves from analysis of the evidence and then evidence itself and then getting back to the messages of what Mandel is saying and then using more evidence in, able, in being able to do that. And of course, there is no perfect structure or formula that you can follow that will do this. Of course, overall, a paragraph should have those structures that I'm sure you will have been taught, like teal and all those types of things. But I do want you to see the way in which it can go between both of those things when we get to these more sophisticated analysis uh, pieces when it comes to Station Eleven. And so that's it, guys. I hope that you've enjoyed the paragraph and I hope you've got something out of it. I would love to field any questions that you have down there in the comments. Please feel free to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Have a hunt around for other videos on other texts and argument analysis and things that we've done. But until we see you next time, all the best with your studies and good luck.